Hello everybody, welcome back. Uh, today we're going to be looking at subunit 1.2, which is all about the mass spectroscopy of elements. So let's get started. Okay, so what we're going to really focus on today, guys, is um, the atomic masses off your periodic table, and we're going to talk about where do they come from. So if you'll recall, we talked a little bit about this with um, in Unit 1.1. Atomic masses for any element on your periodic table, they are in atomic mass units. That is the mass of one atom of that particular element. And atomic mass units, just for your knowledge, okay, an atomic mass unit is equal to one twelfth the mass of a carbon-12 atom. That's just for your knowledge, okay? But what we're really going to focus on today is when you look at these numbers off the periodic table, why are they not whole numbers? Why does every element's atomic mass have all these decimals? And where does that number come from? And that the answer is mass spectroscopy data. So this is just a silly little cartoon. Um, mass spectroscopy data, they're graphs, and sometimes they look a lot like what's in this cartoon. But what is the purpose of mass spectroscopy? Okay, well, usually what it is, is a, a scientist has some sort of unknown. You know, maybe it's at a crime scene. They've collected some unknown substance and they need to figure out what's in it. So they run it through this machine and it spits out a graph. Okay, these ma this mass spectroscopy data. Okay, it shows what elements are in there, how much of them they are, and usually what they will do is compare it to um, a known spectrum. So the scientists run something that they know what it is. They have a graph for that particular element or molecule or compound, and they compare the two graphs and they say, oh, okay, I can see what's in this unknown sample. So let's look at an example of a mass spectroscopy graph. Okay, now this is a very simple one, but let's look at what's what's on the axes here. So on the x-axis you have mass number, and on the y-axis you have relative number of atoms. Let's review from Chem 1 what does the term mass number mean. Mass number means the number of protons plus neutrons. Okay, what you're seeing here, okay, is whatever this element is, has two naturally occurring isotopes. Let's review that term, isotope. Isotopes are two particles that have the same number of protons, okay, two atoms that have the same number of protons. That means they're the same element but different number of neutrons. Okay, so I can see from this graph that this particular element has two naturally occurring isotopes. They have the same number of protons, but different number of neutrons. And I can see that one of the isotopes is more abundant. If I look, went out and looked in nature, I would find more of the 63 isotope than I would the 65. Okay, now I happen to know that this is the data for the element copper, okay? And again, it's just saying, if we went out in nature, approximately 69% of all copper atoms on Earth would be of the 63 isotope, approximately 31% would be of the 65. So what do they use this data for? Okay, well, this data is used to calculate the atomic mass on the periodic table. How do they do that? Well, they do calculations that look like this. Okay, now let's, let's break this down. So what have they done here? They took the mass number 
for that particular isotope and they multiplied it times the percent abundance. Of course, they took the percentage and put it back into decimal form. Did the same thing for the other isotope and then added these numbers together and you get 63.55 AMU. And if you look at your periodic table, you'll see that that is the atomic mass of copper. It's actually an average atomic mass. These atomic masses off the periodic table are weighted averages, just like your grades in CIS are weighted averages. So this is the math associated with mass spec data. Let's look at another one. And let's just kind of talk about what are the types of questions you, you could see. Okay. Um, first thing I want you to notice in this graph on the x-axis, it says mass to charge ratio. Please don't let that throw you. Sometimes these graphs have funny things written on the x-axis. It just means mass number. Okay. We can see that this is the graph for the element zirconium. Okay. It's got zirconium has five naturally occurring isotopes. All right. And, but let's, let's say that, that they didn't tell us what element it is. Okay. And it says, the question says for us to calculate the average atomic mass and to identify the element. Okay, fine. So we're going to go through that same process. So this 0.51 for that first isotope, zirconium-90, I have estimated off of this graph that that's about 51% abundant. So I turned it back into decimal form and I multiply. I'm going to do the same thing for all five isotopes. Again, on this graph, I'm having to estimate a little bit those percentages. I'm going to add these five atomic mass units together and I get 91.35 AMU. If I look at my periodic table, I can see that zirconium is the element with the closest atomic mass to that number, 91.35. So again, if I didn't know what element it was, I can calculate it and compare it to uh, the periodic table. Another question that sometimes is asked um, on the AP exam with graphs like these, again, they probably wouldn't, they wouldn't tell you what element it was. It would simply, you know, maybe in a multiple choice situation or a situation maybe where you don't have your calculator, they might ask you to simply estimate the average atomic mass. And again, you know, it's an estimate, but I can see that the isotope with a mass number of 90 is the most abundant. So I know that the average atomic mass is gonna be a number greater than 90 because of the average of all of these, it's gotta be at least 90, but it's not gonna be as high as 96, okay? Probably gonna be somewhere between 90 and 92. That should allow me to narrow it down to zirconium if I didn't know uh, what element it was. Another question I've seen asked is um, they'll, they'll maybe zero in on one of the isotopes and say, you know, how many neutrons does this isotope have? Again, if you did not know what element it was, you could go through this process to first figure out, okay, this is data for zirconium. Okay, and let's say they ask you to focus your attention on zirconium-94. Well, zirconium-94, well, zirconium anything, zirconium has 40 protons. So if the mass number is 94, 94 minus 40, that's 54. So that particular isotope must have 54 neutrons. And that's, that's about as complex a question is you're going to see for mass spec data. So that wraps it up for 1.1 and I hope you've learned a little something and I look forward to seeing you next time.